How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the start of something new. This is DMC, Devil May Cry. This is the reboot of the series, obviously. The not-so-recent-anymore reboot. Um, it's really good. I like it a lot. This is coming from somebody that's played all of the previous games. By the way, we're skipping the opening cinematic. You're welcome. Figured everybody had seen that way too many times. Now, before I get into discussing the game itself, just a brief overview of what we're actually doing here. Um, I'm going to be playing through the game, but uh, as I've beaten this game already, I'm going to be not just doing the simple uh, normal mode playthrough, because that's boring. I'm going to be doing uh, very hard mode, essentially. Son of Sparta mode, which is, for all intents and purposes, very hard mode. I think that just, like I said, makes things a little bit more interesting, and... Uh, you know, more of a reason to actually watch this one. Now, very hard mode, mixes things up a little bit. It's not only the enemies do more damage and that sort of thing, the uh, placement of the enemies and the types of enemies that you encounter changes quite drastically. Um, in fact, this first level, I would argue, is one of the more difficult ones, just because of the way that the enemies are laid out. And um, we'll see some examples of that. A little bit later on. In case you can tell, I'm not doing this live. Um, too many retakes were done trying to get just a take that I thought was actually entertaining to watch. Um, there was only really one level in all the ones that I've played so far that actually gave me trouble legitimately, like, where I legitimately thought I was going to lose. But plenty of the levels ended up being like, oh, I took too many hits, this isn't a good, uh, isn't a good video. Plenty of them ended up that way, and this was one of the worst for that. I retook the first stage quite a few times just to get what I felt was a good take. Anyways, I'm going to be adhering to the... Uh, do not talk during the cutscenes policy. But uh, regardless, the uh, first level of Son of Sparta mode very much uh, sets the pace for the rest of the game. As you will see. This part's just so silly, by the way. So anyways, let's talk about the game itself. Um, as I said, I've played all the previous Devil May Cry games, and uh, 4 I haven't played a ton of, but uh, 1, 2, and 3, beaten all of them. In fact, uh, either gotten to or beaten max difficulty on all of them. So I would consider myself a, uh, a fan of the series, definitely. And I, I don't have a problem with this game. It's, a, it's definitely a case of I can see where people are coming from when they they hate what they did to the characters in this game, but I don't have a problem with it at all. Uh, first of all, one thing you need to understand is Dante is not emo. He's clearly punk. Uh, you know, not We're not talking Hot Topic punk. We're talking, you know, legit hardcore punk, hence the hair and the Union Jack on his jacket. Um, Dante, you know. Don't shoot. My name is Kat. I'm not a demon. I'm still in the real world. You're in limbo. How come I can see you clearly? I'm a medium, a, a psychic. I can phase into limbo and communicate with you. I can see you, talk to you, but I'm not actually in limbo with you. And if I pull the trigger? I'll die. I'm risking my life here for you. I want to help. I don't need your help. The hunter has dragged you into limbo. I can get you out. I've been down here before. I know how to get out. You fight whatever shit sucking demon dragged you in here. You don't want to fight the hunter. He's not your regular demon. Follow me. Now. Now. 
So anyways, you know, he, clearly not emo. Even the way he acts, uh, yeah, the whole emo thing, that, that doesn't really hold water. I'm not sure what I was doing here. <laughs> I think I just wasn't paying attention. Um, now, throughout this playthrough, really quick, I am going to be showing off some of the secrets and uh, collectibles. For instance, you can come over here to get some stuff. Um, not going to show off all of them, but just the ones that are convenient to, uh, to get to. Stuff you might have missed the first time through, that sort of thing. Um, otherwise, the uh, with the way that just the characters are in the game, the only one that I really have a problem with is Virgil, and we won't be spoiling anything, so we'll get into that later. His character, I do have a few, a few issues with, but uh, Dante himself, I actually think they fleshed out the character, uh, if I'm being perfectly honest. You know, he really didn't have a personality in the previous games other than just like, you know, I'm a smart aleck and uh, I can beat you up. <laughs> so I think that actually giving him a personality, maybe that's what people thought uh, made him emo, you know, showing a little bit of vulnerability in some sense. I don't know. Like I said, I, I really like this game, and this is probably of triple A's. Probably my favorite that I've played recently. Um, out of the other games that I picked up around the same time, which were what Tomb Raider, Bioshock, those ones, this is definitely my favorite out of those. And I think the reason for that is because this is a game that, although you know it, it's gotten criticism for its story, uh, this is a game that is focused on gameplay, and that is something I appreciate. You know, a lot of AAAs come out nowadays, and I don't want to get on a soapbox here, but uh, it's really all about the story, right? Like, uh, I'll, I'll take Bioshock as an example. Great story. The gameplay, though, eh, it's okay. It's just kind of generic. This is a game that you will want to play through multiple times. You know, you'll want to play through on those other difficulties. By the way, you saw I just showed the little secret area over there. You do have to have the hook to get it, though. Uh, but this is a game you want to play through multiple times because the game itself is fun, you know, not just for the story. Uh, by the way, there's another one over there. Uh, on that note, one thing you may not have noticed, and it, I didn't realize at first, to skip the cutscenes, you have to press the backspace key. Hitting the escape key doesn't work. So at first I thought the cutscenes were unskippable, which made me very unhappy. Anyways, yeah, if you want to skip that, just press the backspace key. This is something that will make uh, second and third playthroughs a lot m <laughs> more desirable. Um, Story-wise, the game's actually pretty interesting. I mean, it's not the most original idea, the whole, like, uh, you know, demons taking over the, the Earth through propaganda and that sort of thing. It's certainly been done before, but it's done in an interesting way. And... Um, you know, the characters are, are fairly interesting. I like the way that they've done the uh, transitions for, say, Mundus, for example. It's pretty interesting. Really, the only character that I don't like is Virgil, which is a shame, because he was one of my favorites in the, the old older games. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Even uh, Kat, the uh, heroine, is pretty relatable, pretty likable. I was lucky right there. He happened to shoot his teammate. And uh, she actually has a character, you know, which, let's be honest, uh, characters like Trish didn't really have a well, a character <laughs> to speak of. So, I don't know. I, If you're one of the people that thinks this game is an abomination because of what they did to the characters, then, well, I respect your opinion, but I politely disagree. And that's about all I have to say about that. Gameplay-wise, what is going on? 
Well, it's a heck of a lot of fun. Um, I won't go too in-depth into the fighting mechanics because you probably know about them. But basically, um, you've got your regular sword, and then you have angelic and demonic weapons. You use the demonic weapons by holding down one of the either buttons on the keyboard or triggers, and use the angelic weapons by using the opposite. Um, one thing to note, I actually played through this entire game with a keyboard and mouse. That is really weird, but keyboard and mouse works so well that I've actually found no reason to um, switch to controller. Which I could... I, I couldn't even play the other ones with mouse and keyboard. Like, I tried playing Double May Cry 4 with mouse and keyboard. I don't even. It's, there's no point. But mouse and keyboard works wonderfully in this game. And having the, uh, the angelic and demonic weapons mapped to Q and to E makes it very convenient to actually uh, move around. The camera is also really good, so using the mouse works quite well. All in all, the uh, the port is pretty good too. Um, if I leave uh, leave off VSync, the game shoots up well over 120 uh, as far as frame rate goes. So it's pretty good. Really, there's not a lot to complain about here. Um, the graphic options are a little bit limited, but um, the game runs so well that it's really not that big a deal. There's a uh, secret door there, whatever. Other than that, I mean, as you can see, the game's got its trademark stylish crazy action, as they call it, and, uh, you know, all of the uh, over-the-top cutscenes and one-liners and that sort of thing. It's just a little bit, in places, a little bit more serious, I guess. And it's not really that it takes itself too seriously, it's just that uh, the plot goes a little bit deeper than most Devil May Cry games do. Although this isn't uh, this isn't Bioshock, so don't expect that level of plot. But uh, yeah, it's I mean it's it's good. good. And really, one of the highlights of the game is the way that the uh, you know the levels sort of morph and change as you go through them. That's really impressive. Um, and visually, the game just looks amazing. Not only from a, or not really as much from a technical standpoint, like a just a fidelity standpoint, but from an aesthetic standpoint, yeah, the game looks incredible. Um, just the colors and the way everything moves around again, it's, it's really great. And of course you can hit enemies into moving gears and kill them with that. Like so. Another thing that the game does very, very well is um, balancing the just sort of easy sword fodder enemies with the more difficult ones. So it doesn't just throw wave after wave of like useless henchmen at you so that the game's too easy, but it also doesn't just keep throwing really difficult enemies at you so that the pace slows down and it gets tedious. Um, there's a very good sort of balance between the two. Which again, it's it's very good pacing, and it's quite impressive that they managed to pull that off that well. Also, the platforming for the first time in a Devil May Cry game, the platforming is actually decent. I know that line made a lot of people mad. <laughs> that won't work. Why not? He's bulletproof. There's a rip up ahead. A what? We'll take you back to the real world. 
Just look at this, the way that the level just breaks apart and reforms in front of you. It's, it's just great. And everything that you loved about the previous games is pretty much here. So, uh, I would give this one a look if you have been not. Another thing that I haven't mentioned yet, the voice acting. It's really, really good. Uh, the voice acting for all the characters, in fact, is really, really good. Funny story, by the way, this was my first attempt fighting this boss on uh, this difficulty. I had started multiple takes, you know, just because I had you know, taken too many hits or made a silly mistake that just didn't look so good. But uh, this guy is actually the easiest part of the level. It's one of those simple, just hit him in the face until he falls down, and then chop away at him. It's a pretty standard Devil May Cry kind of thing. And that's really easy to dodge, I don't know why I'm getting hit by it. This part right here, I'm pretty sure you just have to dodge. The uh, shooting it doesn't actually do anything, as far as I can tell. But anyways, um, this is pretty much what the series is going to be. I'm going to be doing one level per episode, with commentary. Just sort of giving my impressions about the levels, as well as, you know, a little bit of advice for beating them if you are playing through on uh, a higher difficulty than the default one. Hopefully that's interesting to you. If not, I think just the spectacle of the game alone is quite great. This game has gone on sale plenty of times already, so if you don't feel it's worth the full price tag, which I certainly do, um, definitely give it a look then. By the way, at this point, I pretty much knew that once I just got my Devil Trigger up enough, I could kill him in one go, so that's why I start to get a little bit sloppy. And in fact, that is him dead. One of the keys to managing these levels is going to be uh, Devil Trigger management. And uh, don't worry, I'll be giving you guys advice on when to use your Devil Trigger each level. You're calling me a son of a bitch, you wouldn't be the first. My mother. I barely remember her. Are you okay, Dante? How do you know my name? My boss knows you. He wants to meet. Please? I helped you back there. I didn't ask for your help. You, Dante. 
I'm with an organization called The Order. Heard of it? Something to do with that mass freak on the net? That's my boss. Wonderful. Can't wait. We're just receiving reports of a terrorist attack that's taken place at the Bellevue Pier in the Western District of the City. Police are asking the public to remain vigilant. Further terrorist attacks could take place anywhere, anytime, and when you least expect them. We have your scent, son of Sparta. Now it is just a matter of time. So that's episode one. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Plenty more to come uh, from there. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>